I had breakfast with someone this morning, and uh, my breakfast companion was telling me about a, a community she was building. Um, hadn't worked out how to monetize it yet, uh, but was talking about this grand uh, community or cause that uh, that she wanted to build um, a community around. Um, I see this a lot, uh, and the challenge is there's lots of people who want to build a community, and they end up building a platform. Sometimes that platform is a ghost town, which is an issue, but uh, more often than not, it ends up not being a business, so it doesn't survive. It's not sustainable. So today's topic is a community is not a business, and also a cause is not a business. When talking to my companion this morning, uh, of course the question came up, how can we turn this into a business? So I thought I'd try and break that down. Well, firstly, what you can do if you have like a community online is the first obvious way to monetize that is to sell stuff. Uh, the first thing that you might be able to sell is a product. Uh, if you don't have your own product, your own natural product from your business, you can create maybe like an ebook or something like that, a digital product. The other thing that you can sell is a service. Now this makes sense if you have a consulting arm to your business or maybe coaching. Um, and the third option is to apply the cross-subsidy model. The cross-subsidy model is the traditional one we know and understand uh, when we look at any media channel. It's where one organization owns the audience and then they rent the attention of that audience to another. It's the advertising model. It's been around for a long time. Um, in this instance, the person who I was having breakfast with this morning, uh, because it's a cause that she's building a community around, there wasn't an obvious uh, choice for, for developing an ebook, and there definitely wasn't a coaching or consulting option, which means that the only thing left was the cross subsidy model. Now, the cross subsidy model is, is 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 complex and it's hard to do. As I said before, the the most obvious option for people who want to follow that route is to uh, is to sell advertising but however there is another option uh, now widely available uh, very popular in the US we're very behind the trend here in Australia but it's affiliate marketing that's essentially when you include a link to somebody else's stuff uh, they link through to the other person's website they buy something and uh, you get like a kickback maybe like 10 20 percent of the purchase price that's affiliate marketing um, in Australia, we're way behind. Like we're, we're, we're at least a decade behind. I read somewhere that in the US, something like 25% of all department store sales happen through affiliate channels. Now, Australia, well, you know, our departments don't even like sell stuff on the internet, so that's why we're very much behind. But the other interesting thing about this whole affiliate option is when you talk to affiliate marketers, they talk about the value of an email. And one email has a valuation proxy of $1 per month if you talk to an affiliate marketer. What that means is that they can monetize one email address to the tune of $1 per month for the life of their relationship with that email address's owner. So if I have an email database of 10,000, that means that over a 12-month period, I should be able to monetize that email database to the tune of $10,000 a month, which is $120,000 a year. In the context of something like Antil, where we have a bit where we have a business audience, uh, the valuation proxy increases to something like three to five dollars per email. So if I if an email to Antil is worth three dollars, um, we'll put it this way: if if we have an email database of ten thousand, uh, we should logically be able to monetize that to the tune of about thirty thousand dollars a month or three hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year. If your audience is something hard to reach, like the over fifty fives who are who are very uh, um, who are very um, reluctant to give out their email addresses and also are reasonably affluent uh, uh, as a whole, uh, that email address might be worth $9 to someone who knows what they're doing with it. So an email database of 10000 to uh, to someone who's reaching out to an over 55s market would be worth uh, $9 a month, so it's $90,000 a month. So you're talking about over a million bucks if you have that email database of 10000 So my advice to, to my friend who was having breakfast with this morning is that if you're you're not building a community unless you can build a revenue model about that, around that. Even if you're not sure what it is that you're going to sell yet, start collecting email addresses because over time, when you build that community, those email addresses will can be used to continually draw draw traffic back to your site. But ultimately, you should be able to sell something. Signing off.